Hey everyone, my name is Pranay Bakre. Uh, I'm a principal solutions engineer at ARM. My primary job is to make sure that uh, partners, our partners, uh, open source, closed source, etc., cetera, um, can run their workloads and applications as seamless as possible uh, and as highly efficient and performant as possible. I also help them build solutions in ARM ecosystem. Uh, this is the agenda for the session. Uh, we are going to talk about what is ARM. So just a quick show of hands, how many of you know what is ARM? Oh, that's great, all right. So uh, then we'll go into ARM in the cloud on what kind of instances do we offer uh, at the moment in the cloud. Uh, then we'll talk about the support for CI CD tools uh, and what kind of tools support ARM based, let's say runners or deployments, delivery, etc. Uh, we'll also go into uh, some languages, uh, just a small subset of major languages that are out there uh, Java, .NET, etc., PHP, and if they are supported and on, and if if they are, are they performant, et cetera. Uh, we'll also do or talk about uh, case studies that we did a while ago um, on GitLab as uh, runners and as an architecture itself. We'll also talk about uh, auto-scaling GitHub Actions uh, and what that looked like when we did that. Uh, then we'll go into a bunch of demos, depending on how much time do we have. Uh, I have a multi-arch delivery pipeline that we can build, um, a Java-based application, a containerized application, uh, we can do all that. Uh, then we'll do some key considerations of building uh, these images that are based on ARM, uh, or rather multi-arch, to be honest. Uh, and then in the end, uh, how do we start or where do we start? So uh, just a high level or one snapshot slide on what ARM is. So ARM is the technology behind uh, your smartphones, your laptops, like I'm using a Mac, which is M1, uh, which is again under the hood running ARM. Uh, we go from Raspberry Pis in the IoT space, Raspberry Pi, Jetson Nanos, uh, or the entire Jetson family. Uh, in the cloud, we have processor families called Graviton. Uh, that's an AWS processor that they built in-house. We also have in data centers, a uh, processor family called Ampere Ultra. That's also uh, based on ARM. Um, and as a company, we don't manufacture chips by themselves, but we provide the intellectual property or the design to manufacture chips to our partners and customers like AWS, Ampere, etc. cetera. And uh, uh, the ARM architecture itself uh, differs from x86 or Intel, uh, meaning that in x86 is based on a complex instruction set or CISC and ARM is based on reduced instruction set. I promise I won't go into much details on what the instruction sets are, uh, but just to give some context because you can't run uh, an application which is running on an x86 uh, or let's say on your mobile phone directly uh, on an ARM based platform, but there are caveats to that, which we'll talk about later. So just to uh, help set the context, the architecture is different from a traditional x86 or AMD uh, 64 architecture. Uh, these are just the uh, cloud providers that are offering ARM-based instances. Um, these include public clouds like AWS, Azure, GCP, uh, Oracle, um, and then there are private clouds, community clouds, and hybrid clouds. This is just a snapshot of what these clouds offer and uh, what kind of instances can you expect. And we'll go in the next slide uh, in details on at least uh, these couple of clouds on what the current state is and how you can uh, start with those. So this is the uh, slide that captures the instances uh, and I'm using a general word, instances in the cloud, but every cloud calls it differently. So AWS calls it instance, Azure calls it VMs, uh, virtual machines, uh, GCP calls it compute engine. So again, all the same thing, basically they are virtual machines that you can use uh, to deploy your workloads. The family of, uh, in AWS, 
uh, it's very easy to identify. Uh, whenever you see a G in an EC2 instance, uh, just know that it's uh, based on Graviton, or at least Graviton 2 processors and uh, for that. So M6G is the general purpose instance, uh, which is Graviton 2 based. M7G is their general purpose instance, which is Graviton 3 based. Now between those, these two instance family types, uh, we see at least like 30 to 40% performance gain. Uh, and of course, it depends on your application stack, but that's across the board. And these instances are cheaper at least, I think Graviton 2 instances are cheaper by like at least 20% right off the bat uh, compared to the x86 instances. Uh, then we have the memory optimized and computer optimized instances as well. Uh, there are free tier eligibilities uh, and I'll talk about towards the end of the presentation on how you can uh, gain those and how you can start working uh, on these instances. Uh, in Azure, they are called DPS v5, uh, PLS v5. It's a small, and I'll show in the cloud how you can select. It's just a small uh, selection that you can do on the cloud to select your ARM-based instance. And in GCP, that's called Tau T2A, uh, general purpose instances. And again, they also offer uh, a free trial uh, if you're looking to start into it. Okay, so these are the major, uh, or rather, a subset of the major CI/CD tools uh, that are support that support ARM-based pipelines that support ARM-based runners. So, for instance, Jenkins support uh, an ARM-based architecture. Uh, Travis CI, uh, and there are uh, lots of blogs out there uh, talking about the performance uh, of ARM uh, on uh, these different kinds of pipelines. Uh, GitLab, uh, they support uh, runners, self-hosted runners. Uh, meaning that you can use those to deploy your applications uh, natively on ARM without using any simulation. Uh, I, I know the people who are familiar with ARM must know that what is, we used to call what uh, what means is Kimu or Qmu. Uh, that's basically an emulation where you run your uh, ARM-based application on an x86 instance. But we can move away from that. We can uh, talk about building it natively. Uh, on an ARM instance. Uh, in GitLab, like I said, self hosted runners. GitHub Actions, again, a CI CD tool. Uh, it supports ARM based runners, again, in self hosted. And we'll see that uh, on, in the demo as well and on the case studies that we did on how you can uh, initiate the deployments and how you can go about it. Uh, Circle CI, Azure pipelines uh, support ARM based instances. Uh, so does AWS Code Pipeline. There are others as well. Uh, but for now, I'm just uh, talking about these. Uh, all right, so the question comes to us that, okay, so I have an application, like someone I was talking to yesterday, they said, that, hey, I have a .NET application. Do you think it will uh, run on ARM? And the answer is yes, because it's supported uh, entirely on uh, ARM64 Blaze platforms. Now I'm using ARM and ARM64 interchangeably because ARM64 is uh, the uh, type of architecture or the binaries. Whenever you download something, uh, if it says ARM64 or ART64, uh, just know that it's compliant with ARM. Uh, for Java, Java is pretty cool. Uh, so is Python. Uh, you don't need to recompile those applications. So if you have, let's say, a Java-based, uh, uh, let's say, a Spring Boot application, uh, you can just take that application as is and run it on an uh, ARM-based instance, be it an EC2 instance, uh, use uh, Beanstalk in AWS, use uh, in Azure. You can run it directly. You don't need to recompile anything because it's Unicode, bytecode for that matter. And again, OpenJDK and all the support is available. Uh, CC++, yes, you'll need to recompile because again, it's a processor architecture that's different. Uh, PHP, no need to modify anything. Uh, when I say PHP, I also mean Node.js, uh, TypeScript, JavaScript, because we don't need to compile those applications. They run out of the box uh, on ARM-based platforms. Go, Go is interesting. Golang has support for ARM uh, since long time ago. Uh, but yes, they will need to be recompiled. And in, the, in our demo, we'll uh, see how you can build your Docker image uh, based on uh, Go. Uh, and make it multi-arch so that it runs out of the box and you don't have to think about anything. Uh, Python, again, you don't have to, like I said in the beginning, uh, Python you can run directly on uh, 
uh, Arambe's instance without recompiling anything. And .NET. So .NET 5 and 7, they bring major performance and improvements. I haven't included all those links, uh, but if you just Google .NET 5 and ARM64, you'll, the first block pops up, uh, let's say Azure or from AWS. And you can actually go ahead and uh, look what kind of performance enhancement they, they did uh, on .NET 5, .NET 7, uh, etc. And there are other languages uh, which I haven't listed, but there is a really cool guide, um, and I think I have it in one of the slides. Uh, it's called AWS, it's on AWS, AWS Getting Started. So basically what that does is that if you are looking to start building on ARM uh, or ARM-based instances, you can leverage that to repackage your applications or just run it as is, depending on what kind of application stack you have. And it all, we also, apart from languages, there is also support for um, in containers. So Docker uh, supports that, and we uh, see that in the demo. Uh, we also have support for Kubernetes, Prometheus, Grafana. All of these open source tools, um, along with the CICD tools that we talked about, uh, I didn't want to put too many logos, that's why I didn't include that here. But basically, these, all of these support ARM-based instances and uh, ARM-based libraries. And uh, with Java, there are, uh, I think the OpenJDK version 17, or I think the latest, whichever is the latest. So all of them are supported right off to the box, and uh, you can just run your applications directly. So this brings us to the case study. So GitLab, uh, we met with GitLab folks a while ago, and uh, we wanted to understand their pain points, and of course, what does it take to run let's say GitLab on ARM-based hardware. So uh, we use the Graviton uh, family of processors, which is ARM-based, Graviton 2 family. And what GitLab has is a reference architecture. Let's say you are an organization where you don't want to use the publicly available GitHub, oh sorry, GitLab uh, repos. You want to host it in your own company. You have, you have some security concerns, you have your clients that need to uh, keep everything in house. You can do that. So uh, we took an example of, so GitLab has different kinds of architecture, 10K, 15K, 25, or I think 5K, 1000 users. That 10K means that it, that architecture can support up to 10,000 users. Uh, and in our tests, we actually found that the uh, reference architecture, we just kind of cranked it up a bit. Okay, let's see if the 10K architecture, because under hood, under the hood for 10K architecture are all those instances um, that are based on uh, your EC2 family. So 6.6G, R6G, uh, et cetera. And it has a lot of components like Postgres, SQL, all different databases, Redis, then is load balancers. Uh, how does it behave if we crank it up more than 10,000 users? And interestingly, we found that it actually can support more than 10,000 users without breaking a sweat. And I don't know how many of you attended Liz Fong Jun's uh, talk yesterday, but she also kind of hinted to that because on an ARM-based platform or an ARM-based instance, you get, if you see a one vCPU, you get a physical one-to-one -one mapping. Whereas for an Intel, you see, uh, since there is no SMT, uh, with Intel there is, so you see um, one is to two ratio. So whenever you are seeing one vCPU, you're actually getting half of that. Um, so it was supporting and it was outperforming what we had in, uh, initially uh, predicted. And again, uh, at the time, it uh, gave us around 20 to 25% cost savings uh, when we deploy, when we used those ARM-based instances or the Graviton-based instances. The second part of that, okay, so you have deployed your GitLab uh, server or uh, components to support it, but you can't do anything if you don't have a runner uh, to build your applications. So GitLab runner is supported on AWS Graviton 2 or ARM-based platforms since 12.6. I don't know what the current version is, but it's been a while. So what we did was we used, uh, we took a Linux kernel uh, code or source code and we built it on those runners. So we had a pipeline uh, and the GitLab folks helped us out with this. So we had a pipeline which actually built GitLab, uh, sorry, Linux kernel uh, source code 
on an x86 and an, on an ARM-based runner. So as you can see in the diagram, hopefully it does. Okay, yeah. So those are the M6G instance, and then there is the M5 in instance. And we also had Prometheus and Grafana uh, collecting metrics from both to see how they perform. Um, and they perform really well. We saw, I mean, right now it doesn't look like much, like five minutes, 40 seconds. How does, how much of a difference like say two minutes makes? But when you scale it up, this was just to show that even at that level, uh, the ARM-based instances or the Graviton2 uh, instances in this case were outperforming, um, which was a pretty big win uh, for uh, deploying or uh, telling our partners that you can switch to uh, Graviton without uh, you know, hassle that, oh, how will it affect the performance and how will it, uh, will it hamper my current application? Uh, so this was one. The second that we did uh, was uh, auto-scaling GitHub Actions. So I know I have a lot of components in there uh, and now GitHub Actions support auto-scaling by its own. But again, this was done uh, a while ago. So that's why I have Lambda uh, and everything in there. So, what it does is basically whenever you, uh, the, the use case was that if you have runners in your GitHub Actions, um, you think about the, if they are not being utilized all the time, if you don't have builds going uh, right out of the gate every day or every week or so, they are sitting there idle. They are uh, accumulating costs and cost is bad. Uh, you want to save costs by uh, doing some different measures on uh, either use CloudWatch or do something else. This was one of the approach where a runner was deployed on the, uh, in the repo uh, as soon as a commit occurred. So it was a very small runner, so it didn't take long. It would take seconds to, uh, we had the code where it actually uh, took like a couple of seconds to deploy it and your pipeline would execute. Once that's done, uh, it would destroy that runner and that's it, the Lambda would take care of that. What that meant was that you could save a lot of costs uh, by doing this auto-deploying or auto-scaling uh, these GitHub Actions runners. Uh, what that also helped us to do was that when you build your CI CD pipeline, you need to think about a lot of different factors, uh, performance and cost, of course, um, then security also, which we'll talk about later. Uh, but when you take cost into equation and you remove the need for a static runner, which is uh, sitting idle most of the time, you can use it uh, or the solution for uh, uh, deploying it uh, on the go and kind of leveraging uh, its usefulness. Uh, okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, multi-arch. So I'll kind of switch back and forth between the presentation. Uh, on how to build that multi-arch pipeline. So let me first go here. So this, yeah, it shows. So uh, in EC2, uh, and I'm just quickly talking about uh, how you can launch ARM-based instances in the cloud. Uh, for in EC2, whenever you go and launch, I know I'm talking about console, we, I mean, these days we use uh, Terraform, everyone uses Terraform or some form of infrastructure as code, but still, just to see uh, that uh, if you go to AWS console, uh, there is a drop down right here, which is 64 bit x86 and ARM. Now, if you select ARM, you see different types of instances here. Now, these are all, like I said, T4G, whatever ends with G is based on Graviton2 or uh, Graviton3 for that matter. So, if I talk about M6G, you'll see all those, those family of instances. When you deploy those, they I can't compare the cost right now, but from what I know, they are like 20% cheaper. Uh, anyway, so the point is that it's really just clicking this one drop down and selecting it, and uh, you can deploy your uh, ARM-based instance and uh, deploy your applications. Same thing with Azure. If you go here in Azure, again, uh, this, it's selected by default uh, for me, but ARM64, x64. x64. So ARM64 is the ARM-based architecture, and if I go here and see different sizes, then these are the general purpose uh, instances that are supported in their memory optimized, compute optimized, et cetera. Uh, oh, VMs, not instance. Compute engine, uh, because again, Google, so Google calls it compute engine. The family is called T2A, 
and uh, this is the series where you uh, directly uh, select the family of instances. This is a pretty, it's a bit different uh, from the other two clouds. There is no drop down or a radio button, but, uh, and you have to purposely select it. But when you select this, it will give you the options of different kinds of uh, compute engines or VMs that are available uh, to uh, deploy your ARM based applications. Again, this is all, so this one and the uh, Azure one is based on a platform called Ampere Ultra, which is again, like we saw in the uh, uh, earlier part of the presentation, is based on um, IP. Uh, yeah, so multi arch, right. So uh, I'll just quick, wow, okay. So I'll just quickly go to uh, runners. So this is a GitHub Actions pipeline, or rather, uh, um, uh, my pipeline that I've uh, forked from a repo. Uh, it's a e-commerce application, uh, and I can show that how how it works. Basically, if you see, uh, you come here and you you add a self-hosted runner. Now here in the architecture, you see x86 uh, or x64, ARM and ARM64. So whenever you select ARM64, it will give you a very simple steps, uh, and you can run your uh, runner. So if we come back to runner, uh, it says offline, right? So I'll just go here and I'll do run.sh and it should automatically be listening to uh, jobs for now. So now if I refresh here, it should be idle. So it's idle because again, I'm not uh, running anything right now. So this is my so this is my uh, YAML file for the application where it's uh, doing continuous integration or build and delivery uh, just on a push or a pull request. Um, I'm using, so one critical thing that we need to understand is here with GitHub Actions, you need to use the tag self-hosted. And it's shown actually here, whenever you try to run a, a runner in, uh, any of the architecture, it says you need to use self-hosted because if you use, we are all used to, or we don't even think about it sometimes, we are used to Ubuntu dash latest or some other flavors because those are the hosted runners by GitLab, uh, sorry, GitHub. And on here, since we are using a self-hosted runner, you can directly use this one to deploy your application since it's the one that we are hosting right now. Uh, here I'm just uh, building that application with Maven. Uh, uploading those artifacts and downloading the jar and then deploying it again um, using uh, Beanstalk, AWS Beanstalk. And all these uh, different um, flavors of services are also supported in ARM, uh, goes without saying. Uh, I now also want to show you uh, a multi-arch pipeline. This is again another uh, application, but I want you to focus on this particular thing. So when you see a target arch, so basically what it's doing is based on the architecture of your runner uh, or whatever you're running um, at the backend, it will pull up the architecture by doing unim dash a. So if I, oops, sorry. Uh, yeah. So if I do here, yeah, so my so I'm running an M1 based Mac, uh, and you can, if you're running it, you just do like this, and you'll see uh, an ARM64 at the end, M1, M2, uh, all of those. Um, anyway, and uh, so it will automatically use that uh, architecture as uh, the target architecture, and you can use it to uh, build your multi uh, arc build. Now, one uh, thing that you need to understand. Uh, with, with Docker also comes a utility called uh, BuildX, which is, or oh, by the way, I'm using this uh, Kubernetes cluster. And if you see here, that Kubernetes cluster is in AWS or an EKS cluster. And uh, it's using Amazon Linux 2 and it's uh, AR64, uh, which I mentioned in the beginning. So if you go here, sorry if I'm jumping uh, going through. Yeah, so these are the, uh, it's based on M6G large uh, and an EKS cluster uh, that's supported. Uh, yeah, so let me come back to this and, 
Right. So here, uh, we need to know uh, some key considerations. So if you are building a multi-arch pipeline with uh, Docker uh, and publishing it them to ECR, and then eventually deploying it on, uh, let's say, AKS. Um, sorry, I'm using technologies back and forth. But all of these clouds support that. So if you're using a Docker Hub, let's say, for registry, and you are deploying it on Azure, you can easily do that. Uh, there is a utility called Docker Buildex. Now, what it does is if you have an x86 machine, you install Docker, the Buildex utility comes with it. You add a ARM-based remote builder. So what that means is you don't have to use Kimu anymore. You can directly use a remote builder where uh, from one of the clouds that we talked about or uh, in the next slide I'll talk about where you can get those resources. You can use that to build your Docker image natively on ARM without having to do anything else. Uh, and it will uh, pull all those instructions, it will pull the relevant files and uh, it's ready to go. So it will be multi arch uh, from the get go. Um, Whenever you push those images, so Docker registry, uh, Amazon ECR, uh, and other public registries, they all support ARM-based images. In Docker registry, if you use go and select on tags, you'll see AMD64, ARM64, x86-64. So again, uh, those are all supported and uh, uh, natively. So I'm sorry if I'm rushing through it. Uh, Works on ARM is our program where we offer free development platforms and resources, uh, basically giving you uh, the flexibility to choose uh, which platforms you need to build your applications on. Um, and these are some links where you can go and sign up. Uh, I, we also offer from the CICD access through Works on ARM, uh, that's the program. And uh, if you click on it, you'll, it, it will get you to a GitHub page where you can request for those access. Um, and uh, like I said, the, these cloud providers also offer some free uh, instances. Uh, you can use and try them out and see uh, how your applications uh, behave. Uh, and we talked about uh, Java, PHP, no need to recompile, run it directly. Uh, you can all uh, get into that. With that said, so this is a GitHub repo, which of all the blogs that I've written um, uh, till date, this is in no way uh, includes everything, but uh, it has uh, at least, and I, I'm going to keep adding to it and apologize if it's not uh, very uh, clearly laid out, but it just shows blogs and the presentations that I've given uh, so far, some links. Um, and I'm going to keep categorizing it so that uh, whenever uh, there is a new one that's coming up, uh, I can keep adding to it. Okay, with that, I think that's the end. So I'll keep this one up. Yeah, so. That's the end of my presentation. Uh, we do have a few minutes, so if you have any questions, please. Sure. Have you found any relevant differences uh, the Linux distributions on ARM where we should bias towards one or another? To be honest, uh, it depends on what kind of applications you're trying to build. I think all the major OS distributions are supported, Ubuntu, CentOS, and everything else. Uh, are you looking for anything in particular? Uh, Okay. I don't think so, that we have found any major differences. Or if I have, then uh, <laughs> I'll reach out to you. But yeah. Uh, any other question? Sure. Uh, yeah, Ruby is supported. Yeah, again, Java based. So yes, uh, sorry, that's Groovy. Uh, my bad. Ruby is supported. Yeah, yes. I didn't include that in the, like I said, in the languages. Yes, Ruby is supported and you can uh, develop your applications. What are the benefits? Yeah. So yeah, I didn't, so if you go to the GitHub repo, you'll see. Uh, basically, uh, different workloads, let's say you're using Memcached uh, or Nginx or uh, what kind of applications do you use? You'll see better price performance and better performance uh, on those particular individual workloads or uh, databases, let's say languages. But there are lots going on under the hood uh, with those instructions and how we build, but You'll see, uh, again, it depends on application to application, but the price performance is uh, usually better uh, when it's compared to uh, ARM basins or x86 basins. What's the, what's the migration ease between going from x86 to ARM? What's the migration ease? Yeah, so that's why I said. So 
yeah, it depends on your application stack. If you're running it on Java uh, and it works out of the box, you don't have to do anything. If it's a Golang based application, like in the uh, Docker image we saw, you'll have to recompile it, but it's pretty straightforward. You can use uh, these instances that we offer through our either Voxogram program or uh, the free resources, and you can build those uh, directly natively on ARM. And it depends again on how many components you have in your application, uh, like databases and so all the major data, I should have included that. So Redis, uh, Memcached, uh, Oracle, all these databases are supported on ARM. So again, it depends on what kind of application you have. But so if, yeah. So if, it's, if it's Docker containers, uh, then it's pretty plug, plug and play. Not really, because it depends on how your Docker container was built. If it was built only for AMD or x86 architecture, then you'll have to recompile that and build it again. Yeah. And you can go to that AV, uh, Graviton Getting Started Guide, uh, AWS. Uh, they have a pretty good resources uh, to build it. Any other questions? All right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thanks for coming to our presentation. Thanks. Thank you.